what is up YouTube it is Rob Stark and in today's video I wanted to rank every brawler for showdown and I wanted to go over each map and tell you who the best was and who the worst are all right so to start out we're just gonna do the overall and I'm sure you can guess who my one and two are and that is of course I have a number one I have dynamite and number two barley throwers just reign supreme in showdown they are by far the best and honestly that is because there's so many walls for them to take advantage of, of being able to throw over and attack people who can't attack them back um, their supers are also very strong so they can defend themselves very well they're able to push other brawlers away from them and into others um, they're great especially in teams they're just often very well on pretty much every single map uh, they're very strong i expect them to get a nerf and whenever the next update is but i still think they'll be good after that um, yeah, they're definitely just the number one and two by far. Um, after that, you get into the brawlers who aren't quite as good, but they're still very good overall. Um, they're still uh, good on most maps, and that's Shelly, El Primo, Tara, and Bull. Um, Shelly and Tara are the more mid-range ones, and they're really able to uh, shoot around corners pretty well, and they're also pretty decent against throwers. Um, Shelly is the better option generally, as she's able to deal damage faster in close quarters um, and she's better versus El Primo and Bull overall but she's still pretty decent versus Dynamite and Barley um, and then Tara is probably a little bit of a lesser option but she's a little bit better versus throwers and she's a little bit worse versus El Primo and Bull um, she doesn't do quite as much damage as fast but she's still pretty strong uh, her piercing ability isn't really able to be taken advantage since she's really often only targeting one brawler for the most part um, and then El Primo and Bull are also very strong in Showdown as there's a lot of grass that they can hide in. There's a lot of corners where they can get close to people. It allows them to be able to deal damage fast. It makes it harder for people to run away. They're not great versus throwers, but they can surprise them. And they are able to get close to them sometimes because of the grass where they can hide, stuff like that. They're still strong brawlers. Um, and on some maps, they're even stronger than most. And then we get into the brawlers who are decent but not not that great and that's really crow nita and mortis and crow and mortis are sort of your escape specialists they're really gonna spend most of the time just running around trying to avoid people um and crow has you know the faster move speed and he has this super that really allowed him to escape uh, very easily and then mortis just has his dash they're really not going to be spending much time getting elixir from boxes they're really not going to be trying to kill too many people uh crow might be poisoning people when he can but that's probably it. Mortis probably not almost ever going to be attacking people unless it's like a dynamite. Um, and then Nita is probably a little bit of a worse version as a mid-range brawler compared to Shelly and Tara. Doesn't deal quite as much damage at once. Uh, Nita has a faster reload speed so over time can deal a good amount of damage. And his bear or her bear can protect him or her uh, pretty well but um, not always available and obviously you have to sort of follow the bear or else it's not very useful um, so Nita's still pretty decent though as especially Nita's good versus uh, Dynamite and Barley but not very good versus El Primo and Bull and then you're getting into the characters you're probably not gonna use that often you still can use sort of the Colts, Ricochets, uh, Poco, uh, Colt and Ricochet can do a lot of damage at once um, but they don't have a lot of health and it's hard for them to really escape at all it's hard for them to keep people away sometimes with all the corners um, but they're still pretty decent and on some maps they're not that bad uh, poco is sort of you know an even worse version of nita can't really deal as much damage at once but can sort of be an annoyance and keep uh, himself alive and then you're really getting into the brawlers you probably don't want to use um, if you're low trophy level you might be able to use them some but you probably don't really want to use, you know, your Pams, Bows, Spike, Brock, Piper, or Jesse. They're really not that great. Uh, they just don't deal a lot of damage that fast. They can't escape very well. Um, their supers aren't as useful as far as dealing damage right away versus one person. Uh, they're really not as good. Now, the one thing with Showdown is obviously how much elixir you put into your brawlers matters a lot. And it can definitely help you get further up in trophies. And the other thing as well is the lower trophy you are, the more variety you're going to see in brawlers as it's easier to gain trophies since you don't have to place as high. So the higher up you get in trophies, you're really going to see more and more of just the best brawlers. 
you start getting up really high, you're going to see a lot, a lot more of Dynamite and Barley. And you're also going to see more teaming as well. So especially Dynamite and Barley are even better in teams than they are by themselves. Uh, that's part of the reason they're ranked so high overall. As well as, you know, they're just great in general. Um, yeah, so okay, those are my overall rankings. Let's start going over the individual maps. And we're going to start out with Death Valley. So in Death Valley, Dynamite and Barley are definitely still the best here. There's a lot of walls for them to take advantage of. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about them. But beyond that, Shelly and Tar, they're definitely strong here. As there's a lot of mid-range opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of chances where there's going to be people who are pretty much always in their range. Um, it's really easy for them to get chip shots, for them to build up their super. And there's still grass where they can sort of surprise people and deal with them at an appropriate range. Uh, El Primo and Bowler are still strong here. There's still enough corners and walls and grass where they can hide and surprise people. Um, but they're not as strong. They're not going to be able to surprise people that often. Um, but it's still possible and it's still uh, easy for them to get boxes very fast in a lot of places. And then Nita is also one of her stronger maps. As I was saying earlier, there's a lot of mid-range opportunities, so she's often able to get a lot of hits. Uh, it's easy for her to build up her super here. Um, and then Crow and Mortar is still not bad here, still able to run around. Um, and then it just sort of goes down like most of the list. It's 10th uh, or 18 is going to be pretty similar for most of these maps. Um, they're really just not as great. It's hard for them to get boxes a lot. It's hard for them to deal a lot of damage um, often, uh, stuff like that. Okay, so let's just go into the next map. So Feast or Famine, uh, one of the crazier maps. So this map really favors people who are great in the middle uh, often. So Shelly is very strong here. She's very strong in any of the grass as she can deal the most damage right away at close ranges, um, especially when she has her supercharged. If she doesn't have her super in the beginning, she's gonna struggle a little bit versus Bowler El Primo. But once she has her super, she's very strong and she's often able to take care of them. Um, Bowen El Primo is still strong here. You might find yourself, instead of going to the middle right away, um, you might find yourself going to the outside, getting one or two boxes, and then going to the middle. Or if you see that not many people are going to the middle, you might just go straight away there and try and get those boxes. If you are able to get those boxes, you pretty much just want to stay there, um, as it's really easy uh, with your high elixir to take advantage of anyone just walking towards you. Now, Barley and Dynamite are still strong here. Um, they're not as strong as other places, though, since there's really not as many walls for them to take advantage of. Uh, they're still decent, especially in teams. And then you find you're getting to more mid-range characters with Tara. Um, and then Nita at 9, where they really can sort of use the outside of the map to their advantage. If you're not really a Shelly, Bull, or El Primo, you probably don't want to go in the middle in general on Feast or Famine. Uh, it's really often not worth it, as unless you're in a big team and you can scout out the whole area you're probably there's a good chance you could be surprised and you don't know if there's a high elixir Shelly Bolero Primo who's just you know on the far edge of the center um, and waiting for you to walk around and they're just going to surprise you and you have no chance so often you don't want to go in the center unless you're a Shelly Bolero Primo or maybe you're a high elixir Tara um, if you're a crow or mortis this is one of their stronger maps as it's really easy for them to run around it's really easy for them to escape on this map um, and then this is one of Pam's stronger maps is there is a lot of open areas so she can really deal more damage and she's um, able to focus on people a lot better on this map um, and then it gets into the similar bottom half uh, it's just harder for them to really do as well but on this map you can sort of snipe people some on the outside so it, it's not horrible to play them on this map but it's probably not very recommended if you want to last a long time it's gonna be hard to get a top two finish often. It's going to be hard to get a top three finish maybe. Uh, possible, but not not very easy. And then going on to Skull Creek. Skull Creek again favors throwers. There's just a lot of walls. Pretty simple. And then Shelly and Tara also strong here. Uh, a lot of mid-range opportunities for them. Um, pretty much most all of the map. Uh, and it's easy for them to get the boxes in the center as well. Uh, Bull and El Primo not as strong here as some other places, but still uh, you know strong. Still easy for them to get close to people. Um, and then similar on this map as well. This is strong for Crow and Mortis. On the outside, they can run around pretty easily. And then you'll find Nita strong as well. And again, similar bottom half. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the next one. And then Stormy Plains. 
Stormy Plains is by far Thrower's best map in my opinion, as it's really easy for them to force people into different areas and it's really easy to predict where people are going to go. So it's often easy to land, land lots of shots as throwers and it makes them hard to approach as well. And that's where Shelly and Tara come second or third and fourth as there's a lot of mid-range places here as well and they're decent versus throwers so they can sort of they can deal damage for them they can surprise them and they can kill them uh, sometimes and then you're going to get into el primos and bulls where there's still some chances for them to do a lot of damage but they're not as strong on this map um, and then you get to nita who's again mid-range and she can shoot around corners pretty well on this map and then mortis and crow can survive very well on the outside but it's going to be hard for them to survive late game in this map. Um, and this is one of Ricochet's better maps, as there are a lot of corners where he can really take advantage of his bounce ability. And then you're going to get into the bottom half again, where they're just not as strong. You can still use a Colt here, maybe you can use a Poco. Um, but beyond that, you probably don't want to use many of those Brawlers. Alright guys, so those are all my rankings for Showdown. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments whether you want me to do rankings for Brawl Ball or for Heist next. I hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching and catch you next time.